Hello everyone and welcome back. I'm Mr. Kovalt and in this video we're going to talk about catalysts and, uh, and um, catalyzed reactions. And so what are catalysts? Uh, catalysts are basically substances that affect the rate of reaction without themselves being uh, consumed by the reaction. So <clears throat> they usually make the, um, the reactions go faster. So that's what uh, a catalyst uh, is. So a catalyst works basically by providing an alternative mechanism for the reaction that has a lower uh, activation energy, <clears throat> which makes sense. So lowers the activation energy so that way it makes it easier for molecules to react uh, more quickly. So a catalyst is, um, <clears throat> um, can be con uh, consumed in early stages of the mechanism, but then later reappear and be remade uh, in a later step. So that's that's why that some of them can um, uh, uh, be not used up or, or not be consumed in the reaction. Um, so if you look at the mechanism without uh, a catalyst of this reaction, so you have ozone reacting plus uh, oxygen atom, and this here, this that's supposed to be an arrow, that's a typo, and that's gonna go to produce two oxygen atoms it's very slow um, but if you look at the mechanism so the mechanism with a catalyst is if you have chlorine for example uh, chlorine gas is going to react with ozone and so you got an arrow here and then uh, that's going to give you oxygen gas and then ClO so this is the fast reaction and then ClO will then react with oxygen atom to create another oxygen molecule plus you get the you get Cl back. So notice that C chlorine atom is uh, used and uh, used in the first step and so now it's makes uh, makes a compound ClO but then the chlorine comes back at the end of the reaction. So ultimately the the catalyst uh, is not used up. And so here's what it looks like uh, if, as, with regard to an energy profile. So here you've got the ozone, here you've got the oxygen atom, and normally it would have to go through uh, this activation energy um, to this transition state here. And so you can see that this, uh, this distance here, that would be the activation energy that would have to be overcome. But when you add the catalyst, you've got two steps and so the activation energies for each of those steps is much lower so you could definitely see that this is much lower than this and so you would expect it to go faster and you got these two two steps so you got a transition state here and you got a transition state here and so this will go a lot faster because the energy barrier is much lower and so um, we need to talk about the different kinds of catalysis um, or catalysts. So catalysts uh, give the reactant molecule, a, again, a different pathway to follow with a lower activation energy. And then you can have um, homogeneous catalysts. Um, homogeneous catalysts are going to be the same uh, phase as the reactant particles. So <clears throat> they're going to hold one molecule, uh, reactant molecule, in proper orientation for the reaction to occur and uh, when the collisions take place. So sometimes uh, this is going to help by starting to break bonds. So the idea there is that um, you have a catalyst that's going to bind to or hold on to one molecule that's then allow, that's going to allow it to orient so or orient it so that way the uh, the reaction is uh, the reactant is oriented appropriately for the reaction, and this may and this and a lot of times this uh, involves the 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 breaking not not the full breaking of the bond but at least the beginning to break the bonds and weaken them. So that's going to also lower the activation energy, and so it'll take less energy for the um, for the collision to cause the the bond to break and new bonds to form. Uh, heterogeneous uh, catalysts are in a different phase than the reactant particles. So 
they're, they're going to react with one of the reactant molecules to form a more stable activated complex with a lower activation energy. So you're going to get a product that's formed and then that's going to lower the activation energy and then, um, <clears throat> and then you'll get a, a quicker reaction. So uh, a catalytic converter in your exhaust system of your car is uh, helps to eliminate pollutants. This would be an example of, of a heterogeneous uh, uh, catalyst. So you've got the ceramic substrate for the catalytic metal, right? That's in a different phase, like it's in the solid phase, but then you've got the gases that come in. So the gases are going to bind to this this catalytic metal, and that's going to form a, a, uh, a transition state that's going to allow it to react, allow those gases to react more quickly. So here's what you see here. So here's a homogeneous catalysis where the catalyst is in the same phase. So you got gaseous catalyst that are reacting or uh, helping the gas particles to react. Here you have heterogeneous catalyst. This is like your catalytic converter. So here you have the solid uh, catalyst and the gases here are going to maybe absorb into here and the catalyst is going to aid in the reaction of these two. So that's, uh, that's the idea between uh, your, your homogeneous and your heterogeneous or your homogeneous or your heterogeneous um, cat, uh, catalysts. So um, here's an example of the catalytic hydrogenation of ethane. So you've got ethene, which has a double bond between the carbons, and you've got hydrogen. So what happens is that the hydrogen and the ethene get absorbed in the ca uh, catalyst here. And then what happens is that you get diffusion occurring. So what's going to happen is these guys are going to diffuse around and uh, the catalyst is going to help them come together down here so you get a reaction so you get the orientation of the molecule and you get the the hydrogen atoms moving around right and then uh, the double bond gets broken and so those two these uh, the double bond when it's broken gets added to the uh, molecule so here you can see that this one is moving around uh, adds to this part here so you add three, uh, so you add a, a hydrogen here, that's gonna break the double bond. And then now you need another one to be added on this side, and so you see that here. And then now that it has, uh, the double bond is broken, it's now become ethane, and so now it uh, is let go. So we also have enzymes. Enzymes are biological catalysts. So uh, because many of the biological molecules and lar uh, are large and complex, most biological reactions require a catalyst to proceed at a reasonable pay rate. So remember, one of, the, uh, one of the things that determine rates of reaction is the uh, collision, uh, collision factor and, and the orientation factor as well. So again, big molecules gonna require, are going to have a really small orientation factor, and so they're going to be slow all, if they're left to, left to themselves. So you need a biological uh, catalyst to help orient uh, molecules. So protein protein molecules that are uh, that catalyze biological reactions, we call these enzymes. Um, so enzymes are going to work by absorbing, adsorbing the substrate reactant into an active site. So you, you think of the, um, the, the lock and key analogy, although that's probably a bit um, outdated. But the idea is that the, um, the <clears throat> reactants will fit into the active site of your enzyme. And then when, when they're in the active site of the enzyme, the, that active site allows for proper orientation, allows for the, the weakening of certain bonds that allow for a quicker reaction. And then when the reaction occurs, the, the, uh, um, the products are let go uh, and released from the active site. <clears throat> so um, that's how, that's how uh, the enzymes work. And we call those reactants that bind to the active site, we call them substrates. So the substrates will bind to the active site. 
So here, down here, <clears throat> so step one, enzyme plus substrate, and you get a uh, enzyme substrate uh, <clears throat> transition state or activated complex, right? Um, so this would be your transition state, and then the reaction occurs where the substrate is then produced, uh, changed into a product, and then let go, and then you get the enzyme back, and then you get the product, and this is the slower, slower part. And so it kind of looks like this. Here's your substrate. Here's the active site of your enzyme. This substrate binds like kind of lock and key sort of method or idea. And it binds in. The substrate uh, is kind of contorted, contorted or stretched or bent or something like that where the enzyme is going to weaken bonds. And then when that happens, it allows for the reaction to occur quicker. And then the products are let go. And then it's free to bind another substrate. And so you see here the enzymatic hydrolysis of sucrose, right? So here you have enzyme plus sucrose. And again, this E and AE, this should be um, arrows. So the enzyme plus the sucrose uh, gives you an enzyme sucrose transition state. And then the enzyme sucrose transition state is going to then cause the sucrose uh, to then um, be like turned into a product and then let go. And that's the limiting rate here. So here they show it down here. So here's, here's your sucrose. Sucrose is glucose and fructose bonded together right here. So this is the bond to be broken. And so <clears throat> the enzyme uh, allows that bond to be broken more easily. So here, here it binds into this pocket here. And then the, the, the contortion or the, the bending or the changing of the molecule or the, the enzyme will stretch those bonds, make it easier to break. And so, and so the, it take, doesn't take much to break the bonds, so it's quicker. So it's lowering the activation energy when it does that. So that's what's, that's what's going on there. And so that's it for uh, this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you have any questions, please put them in the chat. Um, if you please uh, like, uh, subscribe to the channel, like, sh like, like this video, share this video, um, hit the notification bell for more videos. And if you, again, if you uh, have any questions, put a comment in the comment section. Let me know what you think. And um, thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time.